I got the microbes, bacteria, drive Worms rolling deep, making roots thrive Poop, dirt, living, yeah, I'm the worm king Fun guy, yeah, my god, I'm doing that thing Got the lactobacillus flow He must rich poop, dirt, making it grow In the slow lane, it's the living slow show You and me, living green, do it for the worm king uh, I don't wanna kill the coast, give me them worms For my roots and my shoes uh, Keep my turk clean, no I get you the boo uh, uh, uh. We on a mission, keeping it clean I need the system, living soil dreams You want synthetics? No way, we don't play Worms and microbes every day, yeah, way Y'all the harmonies, now my grass moves bad Beneficial bodies, y'all, we keep them fed Healthy roots and shoots, stanky the light Do the soul, root wise, religion just right, oh I don't want no chemicals, give me them words for my roots and my shoes Oh, uh, ah, uh, ah uh. What up, Gromies? Today, we're gonna talk about something important. More important than pH, NPK, your anniversary. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about VPD and Dew Point. One is king of the day, the other, king of the night. And if you don't understand both, my friend, well, you're gonna lose your spot as worm king, man. You're not even a king. You're barely, barely even a worm. You know, it's barely even a worm, man. Like, wait. You're still measuring humidity only? <laughs> All right, let's start with VPD. Vapor pressure deficit. VPD controls how well your plants breathe, drink, and metabolize. What that means is it controls how efficiently your plants turn energy into growth. If you have it too low, they're lazy. Their transpiration is low. They're not pulling as much moisture from the root zone, meaning they're not pulling as much nutrients from the root zone and pushing it up through the leaves and turning it into humidity. If you have it too high and they're going to be pumping it up so much that they're going to overwork themselves, get dried out, curl up. The stomatas will actually start to close back up. That's how they pull in the CO2 and do the gas exchange. So BPD is your throttle. Get it right. Find the sweet spot. In late flower, that's generally 1.2 to 1.3. All right, it's time to talk about dew point. We do get into some nuances here. Firstly, if you're just monitoring humidity and you're keeping it below a safe range like 60%, you're just fine. You're likely not going to have any mold. Um, but what I'm saying is you're not dialed in. Relative humidity is relative. It's determined by how much heat is in the room. Then you can find the humidity measurement and it's a lot of variables. It's, it's not simple. What you want is something absolute. Dew point is the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, irrespective of the temperature. I'm going to show you a website. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback over the last couple of years that I've been growing on this website. It's called dpcalc.org for dewpointcalculations.org. Now you can see right here, we've got it pulled up for 6060. Typical dry range right there. 6060 gives you a dew point of 46 degrees. There's a few things to, to note here. First off is the 46 degrees of dew point means if the temperature without the moisture changing, if the temperature drops to 46 degrees, it's going to turn into condensation. You're going to have water on the, the tent, the walls of the tent, the leaves, the buds. So this is how I'm going to show you mathematically that that's the case. Let's say we drop the temperature down to 46 degrees. Remember what the dew point was? It's 46. And remember, if we don't pull any moisture out of the atmosphere, dew point is going to stay 46 no matter what the temperature is. So if I pull this slider down to 46 degrees, I need to pull the relative humidity up until it gets back up to 46 to see what the humidity is going to be for it to get to 46. And you'll see 100%. So if we were to drop down to 46 degrees with a 46 dew point, 100% humidity is what you will have. 
that's how it works. All right, before we go to example two, I want to point out just a couple more things on this web page. First off, over here on the right, you see mold risk. There's natural aging, uh, mechanical damage, metal corrosion. All we're worried about is mold risk. As you see with 6060, no mold risk. We're going to take a look at that and keep monitoring that as we go through these examples. Also, note the difference between the temperature and the dew point. This is actually called the dew point depression, not differential, like I would think. But it's 14 degrees, 60 to 46. We're going to find that that is a lot. 14 degrees is completely safe. But as we go through a couple examples, you'll see as it gets closer when it starts to become dangerous. This is a very, very co quick way to gauge how safe you are from mold. Uh, example two, we're in flower, 1.2 VPD. Uh, for this example, I've tied the air temp and the leaf temp together just to keep it simple. We've got 71% humidity. I'm going to plug this in 85, 71. Notice we've got some red. Everything turned red. Now the days to mold though is 110. That's fine. 110 is not bad. I mean, that's that's quite a, I mean, you're not going to be at 8571 for that amount of time. You know, you're going to end up bringing the temps down eventually. So, we're pretty safe here. But take a look at the the dew point depression. We're only at 10 degrees now. 85 to 75. So, at this point, if this temperature drops down to 75 just 10 degrees and the moisture stays the same, it's going to be raining in that tent. If we're in a lung room that's 60 degrees, that's perfect for drying, and we're able to get the tent up to 85, we need to be very cautious when we turn the lights off because the temperature is going to drop. And if it drops down to 75 and we don't get that humidity out of the tent, then it's going to be raining by the time it gets to 75 degrees. And you're likely going to be down to 70 or lower in that tent because your lung room is so cool. So you need to be able to make sure that before the lights go off or when the lights go off, you need to bring the humidity down to where the dew point is going to be well below the temperature. So if your tent gets down to 70 degrees, we need to be at least down to 65 dew point when the lights go off. So we need to be at 85, 51. Okay, here's the fun part. This is what you came here for. Right here. Do you think 64 degrees dew point is safe if the temperature goes to 70 degrees at night? We're sitting here, we're looking at our tent. It's 85 degrees. We've got the relative humidity all the way down to 51. That's nice and low. Dew point 64 degrees. What will happen if the temperature drops down to 70 degrees in the tent if we keep it at 64 degrees dew point? That's only a six degree dew point uh, dew point depression, like we mentioned earlier. Before we had 14 and 10 degrees. This is only going to be 6. So we can check our work before the lights go off. Turn it down to 70. That brought the dew point way down. So we have to crank this relative humidity back up so we can see what it would actually be if and when the temperature drops down to 70 degrees. And you can see we're at 80% humidity all of a sudden. And now we've got mold in 13 days. This, my friends, is not good. This is not what you want. And if you were only monitoring the relative humidity, you would have not had the foresight to see this problem ahead of time. If you go back, or actually, let's start from here. We already know we're at 70 degrees. So let's see where do we want to be when the lights go off? Where do we want to actually... 30, 38 days, we're still red, but now we're getting a little safer. 62, not a whole lot different of number, but if we bring that down to 62, we're a lot safer now. I would say maybe 60. Let's go down to 60. There we go. Now we got 163. We're, we're golden. So let's see what 60 dew point would be at 85. Boom. 44 percent humidity is way lower than what you would think you would need in that situation. Okay, let's talk about your temperature and your terpenes. This is a list of the most common 
terpenes found in cannabis ranked from the lowest evaporation temperature up. So what that means is that myrcene will evaporate at 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Terpenes don't actually start showing up until mid flower. And then they don't start showing up in mass numbers until late flower. It really ramps up in the last two to three weeks. That's when you get the most terpene development. So the last two to three weeks of your flower, I suggest that you bring the temperatures down because the later in the flower that you are, the more terpenes you will be evaporating in your tent. Let me give you a scenario that may be counterintuitive, but you open your tent up, you're in late flower, and finally it's starting to really stink in there. Well, what about the idea that it's starting to stink now because it's still too warm and your terpenes are starting to really produce on the plant, but they're also evaporating, floating into the air and making it into your nose. So the bonus tip for this video is in the last two to three weeks of flower, bring your temperatures down in accordance with this chart to try and retain as many terpenes as you can so that that stink makes it all the way to the bag or the jar. All right, let's wrap this up. Lights are on, VPD is boss. Lights off, dew point's king. Make sure your dew point depression is not too small and turn the temps down during the last couple weeks of flower so you can save those terps. I appreciate you being here. If you learned something, like it. If you're vibing, subscribe, ma'am. And as always, Yahweh, baby. Breaking down the waste, turning it to big gold In my garden the story is told yeah. Living soil, it's a micro stream In my garden so they make the supreme team Breaking down the waste, creating enzymes Making magic happen in real time